Welcome back to session two of Wiser Together. This session is titled, The Council of Community. My name is Shane Farmer, and I have the privilege of being your host over this five-week study. And I just want to say, hey, thanks for coming back to session two, taking time out of your schedules. We're so glad you decided to join us. Now, most of us really want to get as much great counsel as we possibly can. If you've ever had great advice from someone, it might have saved you your marriage, your job, or even your life. Great counsel is priceless. Unfortunately, it's often found in short supply. So this session, Pastor Bill Hybels is going to give us some tips for how to find great counsel and also how to give great counsel. Any gathering that's going to help you grow will have to excel at this. I think that this is going to be a great wealth of advice on the subject of advice. Now, some of you have stepped out to take a bigger part in the group this week by bringing some food, opening up your home, or facilitating the discussion. Thank you for doing that. I know your group host greatly appreciates the help, but I also know that you'll get more out of this study by participating in a greater way. If you haven't signed up to do something in the coming weeks, it's not too late. Go ahead and offer to help. Perhaps you could bring ice, drinks, a snack. Uh, maybe you're the one to offer to clean up afterwards or keep track of prayer requests or organize an outing. Everyone doesn't have to do everything, but we'd sure like everyone to take on a role or some responsibility over the next few weeks. Also, you might have noticed last week some people had more to say than others. Now, don't be throwing any elbows right now. Um, but here are a couple of ideas for this week. The first is, if your group's larger than eight people, then after this video, subgroup. Part of the group will stay right here, and another part of the group can use another room in the house. This way, everyone has more of a chance to share and process. And finally, if you've answered several questions in a row, then let someone else have a chance to answer first. This way, those that aren't as talkative get a chance to add to the discussion. You know what I'm talking about. So with all that said, let's get out our guides and our pens as we learn how to get and receive counsel in community. I'll never forget meeting a guy one day. I was in an international airport terminal and we were missing planes together, so we spent most of the day together. He happened to be spitting mad at God for allowing what he thought was an inordinate amount of pain to come into his life. I could tell this guy did not have many people in his life that he was processing things with, and I had a lot of time to kill that day. So I said, well, why don't you sort of tell me your whole life story? Just take your time. We'll be here for hours. And out came the whole self-pitying saga. But he wasn't planning on me listening as closely as I listened. And when he was through complaining and indicting God for everything he could think of, I kind of did my Columbo routine where I started asking some questions. Wow, that's quite a story. Uh, but could I ask you a few follow-up questions? You're saying that your former wife was a horrible person, evil. I mean, you're, you kind of indicated that she turned into an evil person. Can I ask you just a simple question? Before she turned evil, did you treat her well? Were you good to her? Were you faithful to her? Or maybe did you do a couple stupid things along the way that could have added to the demise of the relationship? He said, well, in fact, uh, he said he had done a couple stupid things. And I said, well, you also mentioned that you had debt all backed up and, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in tax problems with the government because you didn't pay them enough and all that. Just a quick question. I'm not prying. I just We have time to kill. Did you ever let your spending get a little out of hand? Did you ever spend more than you earned? Did you ever buy anything foolishly or impulsively? Well, in fact, he admitted he had. I said, oh, now, and you said you're frustrated because no one will give you a job. Just a quick question. Were you a model employee in your life? If I called your last three employers, would they say that you were a model employee? What would they say? Well, in fact, he said he had lost his last job because he had lost his temper a few times and he told his boss where to go eternally. And so he bitted to that as well. I was asking him a few questions and his perspective started shifting. And finally, I said, hey, time out. I, I, I guess I want you to know I'm a pastor. Uh, I have to tell you, I don't think God has singled you out for special suffering. 
I don't think it's fair for you to blame him for half the stuff you're blaming him for. The Bible says if you sow folly, you will reap heartbreak. And it just seems like you're a lot like me. If you sow, you know, the kinds of things you've been sowing, you reap the kinds of things you're reaping. Same thing happens in my life. My counsel to you would be to enroll in the school of wisdom today. Now, how many people were in this guy's life asking him questions and giving him counsel, do you think? Probably not many. Proverbs 11:14 says, where there is no guidance, people fall. But in an abundance of counselors, there is much safety. More times than not, when our lives turn out like this guy, it has been because we've been making lots of decisions on our own instincts and without the presence of godly counsel. It doesn't take a PhD to grasp this concept, gang. Wise people are ravenous seekers of advice for every important decision. If you want to be wise, seek lots of wise advice. We encourage every Christ follower to have a small group of believers because everyone needs a group of people they can seek counsel from. Today, we're going to talk about what counsel should look like when we gather together. Not all counsel is good counsel. Not all counselors are good counselors. Good counsel requires two things, right people and right advice. Who are the right people? I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. The wisest person in the world cannot give you good advice if they don't really know you. I have people all the time who come up to me after services. They're asking which job they should take, what to do with a particular relationship, what's going wrong in their relationship with God. They want advice, and I commend them for that, but I always have to tell them the same thing. I say, I can't give you sound counsel because I don't know you. It's sort of pastoral malpractice for me to give counsel to someone I don't know, especially when they're asking for sp specific kinds of advice. So then I say to them, surely you have a small group. You have a, a little community of people who know you well, who can give you some feedback and some counsel, right? And often they say, I really don't have such a group. And that's heartbreaking to me. I think every Christ follower should be in a group of people where they can know and be known, where they can love and be loved, where they can understand others and be understood, where they can receive sound counsel and give it when the opportunity arises. I, I would hope that for everyone. The right people to give you advice are people who know you well. Second, Proverbs 12.5 says, The plans of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. What kind of people are you getting advice from? Are they Christ followers whose character testifies to their choices? Or are you listening to people as shady as your backyard? You probably wouldn't want to get life advice from someone who seems to be flunking at life themselves. You don't want business advice from someone who gets fired within six months of every job they've ever had. So who is engaged in your spiritual life as counselors? Every single decision as a Christian has a spiritual component to it. Now, of course, God's wisdom can be found anywhere in his creation and within anyone in his creation. However, as a Christ follower, you're going to want to intentionally seek wisdom from those who know and follow Christ. You want to have a group of people who not only know you, but also know Christ. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the great counselor. Wouldn't you want counsel from those who have the counsel of God living right inside of them? The right people know and follow Christ. And one more note on who the right people are when it comes to counsel. Proverbs 9, 7 to 9 says, Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. When you're considering who the right people are for advice and counsel, we must take note of this passage. The right people to receive wisdom are wise people. The wrong people to give wisdom to are unwise people. The person who does not want to hear wisdom is not wise. If you give them wisdom, they will turn on you and often insult you for giving wisdom to them. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 6, Don't throw your pearls 
to pigs. What he means is that if you give sound judgment away to those who don't want it, you'll only get yourself hurt. This is counterintuitive thinking. We think only foolish people need advice. Wrong. Wise does not mean having all the answers. To be wise is to be humble enough and God-fearing enough and Christ-following enough to seek after great counsel. To be wise is to be someone who wants to hear and follow sound judgment. The right people are wise people. So what's good advice? Proverbs 27, 9 says, Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. Now, how often do you think of advice as something that brings joy to your heart? And notice what it says. The kind of advice that brings joy to the heart is heartfelt advice. If you're giving advice to someone and you don't have any empathy for their situation, no feeling for them, do everybody a favor. Don't give them advice. Your advice won't be heartfelt. Third, this proverb says the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. The right advice is the advice of a friend. Advice is not something anyone has the green light to give. There are exceptions to this rule, of course. But generally speaking, you need to be a friend of someone before you go offering them advice. In a group context, when a group first forms or a person is brand new, you probably want to focus on building up trust before venturing into the advice arena. So you get the right people around a circle who are heartfelt friends with your best interests in mind. What are some do's and don'ts of giving and getting advice in a small group context? Your first thing not to do, and this almost goes without saying, is to give more counsel than you are seeking. Wise people are always getting more counsel than they are dishing out. Do not give more counsel than you seek out from others. Also, when giving advice, don't give commands. Commands come from God. Advice comes from a humble friend. So never tell someone exactly what to do by giving commands, but instead offer advice to be prayerfully considered. Another don't of advice would be this. Do not feel that you have to have something smart to say. If you don't know what to say, just say, I don't have anything smart to say. Or, hey, I'm here for you. <laughs> or say, I can't imagine what that's like. I'm not sure what I would do in, the, in your situation. Those are some do-nots of counsel. Maybe let's talk about some do's. Proverbs 25, 12 says, Like an ornament of fine gold is the rebuke of a wise judge to a listening ear. One of the most important things for you to do when receiving advice or counsel from others is to be a listening ear. If you give advice to a person and they get defensive, how often will you offer up your counsel? Maybe never again. You don't want to throw out your perspective to a bristly, defensive person, do you? I don't. Well, if you can't hear someone's advice without arguing with them, you'll wind up surrounded by people who aren't giving you advice anymore. Why would they? They feel like you don't listen. The truth is that there is a kernel of truth in every critic. Even the most out there feedback usually has some shred of truth that you should think about. If someone you know is offering up some advice, just listen. You want them to feel that their advice is so welcome and invited because then you'll be more likely to get more of it in the future. One of the biggest differences between those with great judgment and those with average judgment is in listening. Really wise people have made others feel so safe in telling them the whole truth about themselves that they're often getting 10 to 20 times the feedback in life that others get. Most of us walk around blind to our own shortcomings, but wise people make it safe for others to tell them anything or everything. Not many have the chops for this, but if you do, you'll be well on your way to wisdom. What should you do when getting advice? Listen. Second, Proverbs 27.5 says, Better is open rebuke than hidden love. You might think the world of someone, but if you don't show it, that's no good at all. Perhaps you feel confident that someone knows that you're in their corner, and out of that place, share some feedback with them. If you have not really shown your love for them, they will not feel that your feedback is motivated by love. 
Maybe they'll just feel judged instead. When it comes to counsel, make sure that you show your love for them before showing the truth to them. And when this text says open rebuke, it does not mean public rebuke. It means sharing truth face to face, as opposed to them hearing about it through the back door. In most instances, the right thing to do is to only share correction with someone in private or in the safe confines of the group. Here is a good saying that is absolutely trustworthy. Rebuke in private, praise in public. Fourth, when getting advice, make sure you get as much advice from wise people as possible. Never hear just one or two voices. An abundance of counselors is what you really want. Seek many counselors. Each person in your group might have a slightly different perspective, but it is the full picture that you want to have in sight when you're making important life decisions. Fifth, discern when someone needs you to listen versus when they really need advice. When someone says, hey, I need advice, a lot of the time what they really need is a friend to just sit down and listen. Don't give advice during an outpouring of emotion. What is needed first is just a place to process. Advice might take them out of their heart and back up into their head too soon. Just wait a little bit first. Another do of advice is to remember that the best counsel comes in the form of questions. When you ask someone questions about their situation, you're helping them look under every rock and around every corner. They will often find the path of wisdom themselves this way. You might say, uh, what would happen if you did this? Or what would happen if you did that? How would so-and-so feel about you doing this or that? What are the risks involved? I think you kind of get the point. The best counselors in the world are those who ask the best questions. And finally, a great form of counsel is to recommend a book. If you or someone else you know has read a book that might be very helpful to someone, feel free to recommend it. Not as a have to, but maybe just as something they might want to check out. Uh, I've helped a lot of my friends that way. As we wrap up this session, maybe I could pose a question to you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how easy is it for people to give advice to you? Uh, how would you self-rate? And uh, do you have the courage, after you give yourself a grade, on a scale of 1 to 10, to ask the other people in the group if they agree with your self-assessment? I'll never forget being in a group one time, and one of the guys was mentioning that he gets quite terse or short with his assistant, his secretary. And so the rest of us in the group said, well, how short do you get? I mean, like, you don't say abusive things to her, do you? And the guy said, no. The guy said, but in the middle of a pressing day, if I've got phones ringing and uh, emails coming, a lot, lot of things happening, uh, I'll raise my voice, I'll be very short, I'll be very curt. And the rest of us just sat there uh, kind of stunned. And he stopped and he said, well, this is just all in a day's work, isn't it? And then finally one of us said, hey, you know, brother, <laughs> you need to reflect the spirit of Christ even in the middle of a day's work. You need to be kind and gentle to your assistant even when the phones are ringing and things are flying and all that. And he got a little defensive about it. Uh, he said, you're taking this Christianity thing too far. I mean, come on, we're only human beings and this kind of stuff. So we just stopped right there. And we said, well, maybe you would just consider this. Just prayerfully consider this. And uh, you know, it's up to you and God. A couple weeks later, the guy comes back. We were talking about different things in the group. And then at the very end of the group, he said, I have a confession to make. He said, I was dead wrong the way I was treating my assistant. And actually, I kind of knew it. That's probably why I brought it up in the group a couple weeks ago. And you had the courage to call me on it. You asked me to be a better man. You asked me to be a better boss. You didn't demand it. You, you just suggested that I prayerfully consider it. He said, I did. I changed my behavior. A couple days ago, my assistant came to me and said, you know, you're like a different man. What happened? And he said, I actually told her. I said that I'm in this small group at church. And guys in my group, when I told them how I treat you sometimes, they called me on it. And so you kind of have them to thank. And so his assistant said, well, you thank them, because uh, she really appreciated being treated a little differently. When you're in the right kind of group, and you have the right kind of spirit, and you can 
give and take a little bit with counsel and recommendations, it really helps, gang. It, it helps you be a better Christian, maybe a better spouse or parent or colleague at work. So I, I wish you well as you experiment with uh, your iron sharpening iron and, and you giving and receiving counsel from each other. God's best.